G'day Paul here down at Caves Beach on the coast of New South Wales near uh, Newcastle and today we're reading the story about the death of Lazarus because Lazarus actually was buried in a cave probably a little bit similar to this but it had a big stone rolled in front of it when he after he was laid in there so reading from John chapter 11 now a man named Lazarus was sick he was from Bethany the village of Mary and her sister Martha whose brother Lazarus now lay sick he was the same one who had poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair so the sisters sent word to Jesus Lord the one you love is sick when he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. He wasn't going to be rushed. And then he said to his disciples, Let's go back to Judea. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. After he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. And Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. Verse 14, so then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe. Let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of the disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. Don't know what they meant by that. Verse 17. On arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem. And many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of a blind man have kept this man from dying? Verse 38, Jesus once more deeply moved came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. 
Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odour, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Wow. That is a resurrection from the dead after four days in the tomb. Whoa. Then there was a plot to kill Jesus arising from that verse 45. Therefore many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing, they asked. Here is the man performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him. And then the Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. Then one of them named Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year, spoke up, you know nothing at all. You do not realize it is better for you that one man die for the people than the whole nation perish. He did not say this on his own, but as a high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the Jewish nation. <clears throat> and not only for the nation, but also for the scattered children of God to bring them together and make them one. So from that day on, they plotted to take his life. The resurrection of Lazarus from a cave. Lazarus, come out! And he came out. What a marvellous story. Oh, so inspiring. It can give you goosebumps as you listen to the story and imagine Lazarus walking out onto this beach. Get into the Word. May the Word get into you. You have a great day. We'll see you later.